Now here's one that's very interesting. I love the work that they did recently on this one. <clears throat> this is Barry and Valdez and on the microbiome. And look at this chart. You have fruits, vegetables, legumes, nuts, and seeds, and bioactive compounds uh, and how they interact when you consume them. So look at this. We know how they affect, for instance, the heart, how they affect the liver. And if you look at that chart closely, we're getting to the point now where we're drilling down and showing you what plant, what seed, what vegetable, <clears throat> which fruit literally turns on a particular part of your immune system or your psychology to have a particular outcome. So the new pharmacy will be a plant-based living pharmacy that we will literally have an entire science on this. We have to re-educate every physician in the world, which we've started to do, by the way, uh, that we successfully, with our colleagues out of Harvard and out of Yale and out of Loma Linda and all over Europe, created the very first lifestyle medicine graduate degree in Lithuania, which is conducted in English. You can get a master's or doctoral level, and you don't have to be a physician. You just have to have a four-year scientific undergraduate degree. And this is where we're heading. As a matter of fact, as we speak, the U.S. military, the Air Force to be exact, is working with NATO on lifestyle medicine to put soldiers on it throughout the NATO alliance. And this is where we're heading with this. So this is no longer a group of people talking about eat vegetables. This is really a significant move in the right direction that will take humanity out of the sadness and the disease and the disorder and the unbelievable cost, not only economic cost, but emotional cost that out of control lifestyles have on you as an individual and humanity as a whole. So these functions that we talk about are really amazing. And these are the things that we've been contributing to and working on at least my whole adult life. And since Ann Wigmore founded the Institute in 1956. So now we look at gut microbiota as a mediator, you know, you know what a mediator is. He talks from one part of dietary impact on host met metabolism in most diverse in vegans and has been suggested to be a health promoting factor. So now what we know is not only do the plants do what I just talked about uh, in the last slide, but we now know that they actually create greater intelligence, greater communication between one cell and another cell. So why is that? Just like you. If I got you drunk, are you going to have an intelligent conversation with another human being? Or by the way, if I gave you the healthiest diet in the world, exercised you and got you to do meditative practices for two weeks, would that conversation not be much, much more effective and fluid and intelligent? Well, you know what that answer is. And you are reflective of the cells and the cells are reflective of you. So as we treat our whole being in a healthy way, we treat ourselves and vice versa. So we have extraordinary, wonderful things to share with you today like this. This is a study that was just conducted a couple of years ago. Look at this next one on immune system. We've been talking about immunity, immunity, immunity our whole life. Why people come here, why people get well is the immune system. Well, now we know how plant foods do this. So look over at this chart again. You look at beta carotene at the top, phenolic acid, zinc, you know, vitamin C, you'll get the production in the middle, formulation, and what do they affect? We now know exactly what immune system cells and mechanisms they switch on in the body to boost the immune system. So look at one side, it shows the plant foods, the other side, immune boost. And what it is, is these particular elements within raw plant-based foods. Remind you once again, once you cook it, most of these are gone or completely gone once you cook the, the plant-based food. They produce, they formulate, they move over, and all we have is a formation that gets the neutrophils, which are part of the immune system. It's an amazing army you have. You have the innate immune system, the adaptive immune system. Neutrophils are part of that. Antioxidants, antibodies, which are by the guys that hang out and say, hey, that bad guy's been here before. Let's go and attack it. We know what that bacteria is. We know what that virus is. 
And we have the T cells, which are the generals. I mean, this is like the toughest general in the history. And we want that general to be well-fed, well-rested, well-hydrated, and supported. And when the general is given all of those attributes and support, it reacts in a very, very good way and says to the B cell and other immune system cells, the general and the colonel, let's get going. Let's fight this virus. Let's fight this cancer. Let's fight this mold. Let's fight this fungus. Let's fight this bacteria. And why people are sick is because we don't have the plant-based foods. Now, there's more to this story, too, than just plant-based food. We're not just monocyted here at Hippocrates. We're going to get into that a little bit later. So active aging and prolongevity effects. Now, I want you to really, really look at this. So on the Western diet versus whole grains, nuts, and they're only being polite, saying reduced red meats, they're doing remarkable data work showing extraordinary improvements. For instance, increase of almost 11 years of lifespan for women by moderating the amount of garbage they eat, not getting rid of it. You know, they may think it's extreme to say get rid of why if it's if it's actually improving lifespan for women by 11 years, but men by 13 years, why wouldn't we say get rid of this stuff? And then we wouldn't have 11 years and 13, we could hypothesize and say it may be 20 years in both cases. And if you start this at 20, this happens. If you start it, you know, when you're older, after you're 60 years old, you're going to get an eight-year increase in lifespan by moderating what you eat, not doing what we're suggesting to do. Throw the garbage out. Get rid of the junk. Leave behind the addictive patterns, the substance abuse, the sugars, the fats, the things that we're going to... But look at the chart we have here to show. So we have genetics, we have size, we have age, we have sex, we have health status. We bring it down through longevity diet, which is, again, a raw plant-based diet is the epitome of that. So we have a platinum level as a raw plant-based organic diet. A gold level is a plant-based diet in part that is cooked, but in part that is raw. You have a silver diet that is in great part cooked plant-based food. Then you have a bronze diet that is almost all cooked food and maybe some of the junk food. Then you have a copper diet that may be the new meat substitute diets, high sugar, high smoothie, high carrot juice, high beet juice diets. Now, I'm not here to condemn anyone. Whatever your entry level is, do it. But the fact is, you want to be up here at the platinum level. If I gave you an opportunity, as an example, I brought in a, a container and said, okay, you have a choice to take any of this metal that you want. You can take a platinum, you can take a gold, you can take a silver, you can take a copper, you can take a bronze. Which one would you choose? Of course, there'd be no question you take the platinum. But are you willing to put the effort in necessary? And look at what happens here. With the carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, they go down through the cycle. Regeneration occurs. You have get rid of the animal fat, the sugar, the animal proteins, as you saw from that study in Australia, where there was a 40 to 50 percent of percent difference in people that consumed animal food and high plant food diets. It's just why not, people? I know it's a struggle. I know it's hard. I know you have all the talking heads speaking to you. But let your heart speak to you. Don't listen to the talking heads. Talking heads have a lot of opinion because they're stuck where they're stuck. Every day I wake up and I attempt never to be stuck where I was stuck yesterday. Now, it's hard. I'm not saying this is an easy thing, and I'm not saying that sometimes you don't get stuck into your own paradigm. But every single day, I'm open to learn. I'm open to grow. I'm open to improve. And when you sit in a position like I'm sitting in, where I counsel thousands of people every single year and speak to hundreds of thousands of people every year, as I am you right now, I better be ready and open to improve and to grow and to bring you the latest information, the latest data, and show you the real hardcore science in this stuff. Others talk about science. They use science almost as a shield. Oh, yes, there's not a, enough scientific data. I had a debate one time with a, a really well-intended alternative medical doctor, and I congratulate him. He's doing much better than most mainstream medical doctors. But he was saying, there's not enough data. And my response clearly to him, which it would be today to any people like this, is 
don't cherry pick your data. I have to read things I'm completely uncomfortable with sometimes, but by the way, if it makes sense, and certainly if it's a meta study that I've seen many, many examples of that being, it will sway my opinion. Not because I'm easy to sway, that's the opposite of true. It's because it's hard for me to sway. And if you can sway me that way, that's what's gonna come out of my mouth and what I'm gonna guide you to do. In vitro and vivo, these are not in humans, trials of plant-based food against different disease. So look at these different studies that are now done. We're drilling down people, we're drilling down. It's so remarkable. So look at the vegetable category, the fruit category, the seed category. Look at over the type of disorders. Moving to the middle of that, colorectal cancer. We know that bok choy, for instance, is an example, all forms of cancer, spinach helps you colorectal cancer, you know, and down the list we go. Now we go to the next page. We look at nuts. We look at spices and herbs. Thank goodness now we've been talking about this forever. Spices and herbs are sometimes condensed nutrients, have much, much more than many of the common vegetables of the phytochemicals, the medicines that are in the food. And look at what we have. Even essential oils are talking about with this one for diabetes. Why? Because some organizations are putting a lot of effort and a lot of money behind scientific data to show you that even essential oils change the body's biochemistry and help that what? Immune system to activate. Look at almonds for lead toxemia. This is a new one on me. Little did I know that. So we're constantly learning things. Pumpkin seeds, cancer and arthritis. High, high zinc content, flaxseed, diabetes. Cognitive and plant-based diets. So this is the mind. You know, we say, oh, people have intelligence. They have I IQ. Uh, thank God that's all being thrown to the wayside now. We recognize that people are born sometimes with brain damage. The most obvious forms of brain damage now, as Dr. Seneff from MIT tell us, is that very large spectrum of autism that she speaks about even dyslexia being in that, ADD, ADHD in that, what used to be called Asperger's disease, fully functional and not so functional autistic children. They're forms that are commonly spoken about and discussed and scientifically studied on brain injury. And there's a second level where you're not coming up with any of the common symptomology that would actually fit into those categorically. So what we're seeing in those cases is people who have been a little slow, as we call it, or their uptake is not as quick as it should be. And we're recognizing now this could be worked with. Brilliant work of Dr. MN, I'm so happy for what he's doing now, shows you can reverse in great part these problems. Now, we can show you that these problems can be changed by just reducing inflammation by changing to a proper, healthy dietary lifestyle. Drinking sodas create inflammation. Drinking alcohols do. Drinking coffee does. They, no question, biochemically, in every case studied, create inflammation. And when you inflame the brain, it is not functioning at the rate and the ratio that it ought to be. <laughs>